blessings Jesus describes in his Sermon on the Plain, you will recognize how Jesus offers promise and hope to those who are persecuted and suffering, to those who may have been born in the wrong country with dictator regimes or a poor economy. That is why Christianity is growing so fast in China. Jesus has something to offer the sick who have no access to health care. So the people flock to underground churches where they are packed together like sardines standing shoulder to shoulder to hear the gospel and be blessed by it. There's a preacher that went to China to share the good news and he was asked to stay the entire day to preach. When he asked the people what they wanted to hear, he said everything. We want to hear everything. When he asked them about taking a break for lunch, they replied, we don't need a break. After hearing God's word preached for 12 hours, they begged him to come back the next day and preach again for an entire day. That, dear friends, is hungry and thirsty for God in a country where there is no access to Bibles. Several years ago, John and I went to be part of a healing mission in the Houston Astrodome Stadium with Charles and Francis Hunter. We flew to the event, and when it was time to pray for people in need, we went down to the field and laid hands on whoever came forward. It was an incredible event, one I will never forget. These people were hungry for Jesus. They had faith that God would indeed bless them, and God indeed came through. People were cured of all kinds of diseases and infirmities. As a youth director at Zion's UCC in Pottstown many years ago, shortly after I started there, the pastor passed away and we had a wonderful interim minister, but he was not able to be there full time. So I helped him by going doing hospital visits, and I may have shared the story with some of you, but I know not all of you have heard it, so I think it's worth repeating. There was a lady there named Anna. And she had had gallbladder surgery, and one of the staples let loose, and it went through her entire body. And it damaged every organ in her system. I went to visit her three times, and all three times I could not visit her because she was sleeping, and she was too sick to even have anybody come and visit. So I was sharing this need with a colleague, and we were both led to pray for her. And God revealed to me that she would indeed recover. When I returned back home, her daughter had left a message on my answering machine that while we were praying, she had gotten and improved enough, just enough, to take her down to a hospital in Philadelphia. So I immediately got in the car and I zoomed down to uh, visit her. And when I went into the room to see her, I immediately went back out to the nurse's station because I thought I was in the wrong room. This person didn't look at all like Anna. I was assured by the nurse that it was her, so I went back in and there was her daughter sitting in the back corner of the room next to her bed. And his liver, heart, and lungs were severely damaged. And she was so swollen that it was not possible to distinguish her nose from her cheeks. She was totally unrecognizable. The hospital in Pottstown could not help her, but I knew that God could. With God's blessed assurance still echoing in my spirit, I asked her if I could pray for her, and she nodded yes. As I began to pray, I got out of the way, and I just let God's Holy Spirit take over. After all, God knew what to say with her much more clarity than I could. The words came forth that she would completely recover, words I would never say without the guidance of God. After praying, I went back home and waited each day for a report from her daughter. Each day, one of her organs began to heal, and eventually she became well enough to not only return home, but also return to 
church. God had performed a miracle in Anna's life, and I was blessed to be a part of it. But you don't have to be as sick as Anna to receive a blessing from God. I can share many, many, many more stories with you. Simple healings from a migraine to a broken thumb, and many situations of emotional trauma during my tenure with the Order of St. Luke the Physician in New Jersey, praying for others at healing missions and at healing prayer breakfast in Reading. God is just waiting for us to ask. God wants to be in a relationship with us, and he gives us his holy word as a promise of his love. He reminds us, blessed are you when people hate you and exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. One of the biggest examples that comes to my mind is the one of the public school teacher who wore a cross necklace and was fired because of it. Not too long ago, Christians were told that they were stupid by atheists and some in the scientific community. But truthfully, I believe it takes more faith to believe that all of the incredible inhabitants of this incredible universe happen without the hand of God. Just recently, there was a video posted on the internet of birds flying in patterns that were astonishing. I, I can't even imagine just beholding those birds flying in patterns that kind of oscillated in and out and made all these different shapes in the sky. It was just incredible. There was no other reason for all this beauty other than God entertaining himself. There was also a picture of a praying mantises, and I, I really happen to like praying mantises, but this praying mantis was super, super, super magnified, and it had so much detail that it looked like some creature from outer space, and it looked like he had a suit of armor on with this incredible colors of purples and blues and greens. It was just a sight to behold. If we were created simply by chance from rocks, there would be no need for the colors of the rainbow or the imaginative shapes in the clouds or, for that matter, imagination at all. And of course, without God, there is no Jesus, and without Jesus, there is no peace, consolation, joy, hope, resurrection, or eternal life. It is our responsibility as Christians to share the good news of the gospel in order that others may come to faith. This past Friday, as Kurt had mentioned, some of our members went to Old First to feed the homeless men there and share a delicious meal. But without Jesus Christ, those men will always be hungry. If we just feed their bellies with physical food, they will not be spiritually fed. It is very important that we also share how much God loves them, and that's why we are there to provide them with a hot meal. I think it's important to glean several lessons from today's gospel scriptures. It's important to recognize that there were many disciples who followed Jesus, not just the original 12. It's also important to note that everyone present was healed. Everyone. Healing of every pain, every emotional hurt, every infirmity, things modern medicine hadn't even discovered yet. Discovered a cure for you. We often think of Jesus as Savior, Teacher, Healer, Prophet, Son of Man, and Messiah. But here in this scripture passage from Luke, we discover what a great leader Jesus was. We recognize his compassion for all, and I emphasize all, who were present. No discrimination, no judgment. Jesus had a motive for living that was very different from our culture. He reached out to the people who didn't have a lot of education and who didn't have a lot of opportunity. He reached out to people that didn't have money to buy clothing or food or live in extravagant dwellings. When I think of the Hindu Dalit living in India, the lowest caste born into a Dalit family, 
I think about the extreme sense of hopelessness that they must feel. They have no chance, absolutely zero, nada, no chance of opportunity like a Warren Buffett or a Tom Brody living in the United States. When I think about the little girl or the little boy who was orphaned in Palestine, given a gun in Hamas camps, being taught to kill the infidel, I see little innocent children with little hope of ever having a normal life as we know it in the United States. When I see poverty and liberty in Liberia, when people don't even have clean drinking water, electricity, or medical care, I think about Jesus' message that he gave in the Sermon on the Plain, as described in Luke that we heard just a short while ago. Jesus has a message for the world. Jesus has a message for the downtrodden. Jesus has a message for those who would otherwise have no hope. People, even here in America, who probably will never graduate from high school because of the lore of drugs and gang violence. Even in our own city of Philadelphia, not that far away, I think the graduation rate is less than 50%. People who will probably never go to college to get a business degree and learn the tricks of the trade and the opportunities like Bill Gates had. People who don't even know their fathers or have never seen their mothers sober. These are the people that Jesus is talking to. And since Jesus has been crucified and raised to the heavens, he has entrusted us to carry out his message. Jesus has something to offer them. In this life, their opportunities are few. But in the next life, they will receive their crowns of gold. Their tears will be turned into joy. They will never go hungry or have to scavenge food from the trash dumpster. Just think what we could do if we were motivated to make believers out of non-believers. Think about what it would be like to have our sanctuary filled once again with people thirsting for God. Imagine needing two worship services to fill the demand of people wanting to worship. Imagine the joy of seeing our Sunday school rooms filled with children. If we are to emulate Jesus' ministry, then we cannot afford to dismiss one of the greatest drawing features of Jesus' popularity. Jesus didn't stop with good preaching and good teaching. Jesus healed people of their diseases. Jesus cast out unclean spirits. We must be careful to never carry negative spirits that squelch God's plan. Here among the multitudes, power came out from Jesus and he healed every one of their diseases. He cleansed all of their sins. Churches like the Toronto Blessing, Azusa Street, and Brownsville have drawn people from across America because of the great blessings people received during worship. Many young people in today's culture say that they don't want religion, but they do want a religious experience. They want to feel the power of God. They want proof of God's existence. And the proof is in the power of God, the power of God to change people's lives, the power of God to perform miracles, the power of God to transform us, the power of God to mold us into much more beautiful vessels than we could ever imagine without it. Jesus lifted up his eyes on his disciples and he said, Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. God has a plan for us. That plan doesn't include famine. That plan includes great abundance. Jesus told them, Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. I 
I know that there are members of our congregation who weep deeply in this life. I know there are some of you that are suffering because you have friends and loved ones and relatives, too many who have recently passed and have had to attend many more funerals than you would like to. I know we have some members of our congregation who are weeping because you are deeply, deeply lonely. Deeply because it seems like just isn't fair at times. But Jesus gives us the promise that it will not always be that way. When life turns on us, we need to be ready to turn to God. God is waiting for us to turn to Him when our lives get out of hand. When we can't cope with life, when life just doesn't seem to be worth living, God gives us meaning and purpose and comfort and love. God opens his loving arms and embraces our deepest hurts with his blessed assurance. But God will not interrupt our grieving if we do not invite him. God will not impose his love on us if we do not want to accept it. God will not push us into healing if we desire to drown in our sorrows. One of the hymns that perfectly reflects Jesus' Sermon on the Plain is one of my favorites that I sang with my mother as I was growing up. Blessed Assurance. This is a praise song about God's blessings for us when life's roller coaster takes us on a big dip. This is a praise song about relationship, relationship between you and Jesus Christ. Perfect submission. That's what it's all about. Luke's opening words about a great crowd of disciples coming to hear Jesus and being healed of their diseases. They were ready for change. They weren't satisfied with being poor or living in fear or being oppressed. They were ready to be lifted up. They were ready to grasp Jesus' promise and grab all the gusto they could get. And Jesus delivered. Jesus delivered healing to all. Can you imagine a great multitude praising Jesus, everyone well, none among them sick, Jesus giving them hope for something far better than they could see with their own eyes, far better than they could ever imagine. Jesus is offering the same to you. Perfect submission. Perfect blessing, perfect trust, perfect faith, perfect love, perfect grace. Grab onto it and hold onto it. <coughs> if you don't need it right now, then save it for a rainy day. Save it for when you need it the most. Save it for when you are weeping. Save it for when you are thirsting for a relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. Save it for when you need it most. And share it with all those who have never experienced the fullness of God's grace. Let's sing Blessed Assurance together as we reflect on the goodness of God. And the people said, Amen. Amen.